Greetings everybody, this is Leviathan here, and today I am bringing you a particularly interesting Akon Condemned setup. Uh, it's not too different from what I'm running currently from my T13 speed farming, and I have videos on that as well, so feel free to check out the video description below for any other links to pieces that would be kind of similar to what we've got here. But basically, this is a version of the build that doesn't rely on Ingeon because when you're doing bounties, you know, you often have to traverse long, far distances and you're not always killing elites. Uh, so it can be unreliable to have that be the only way that you're getting permanent uptime on your steed charge. So this version of the build actually utilizes a few different things in the Crusaders kit to make sure that we have 100% uptime on the horse as you're seeing in front of you here so that whenever you need to get from one long location to another, you can do so and that's going to help you be very efficient on your bounties and you can also see that this is a test in a four player game with uh, T13 and we're doing just fine, killing all things in essentially one shot, you know, destroying everything, looking beautiful. So without further ado, just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the gameplay. I'll hop into the actual game that I have here. <laughs> and show you what the gear looks like and what the skills look like. So as I mentioned, if you're familiar already with the T13 Condemned setup, and especially the non-Sage setup, then you're probably familiar with many of the pieces that I'll show you. The main set in use here is the Akan set, which was buffed in patch 2.6.1. You can see the uh, powers on screen for you. The two-piece set reduces the cost of all abilities by 50% while you're in Akrat's Champion. Four-piece set reduces the cooldown of Akrat's Champion by 50%. And last but not least, the six-piece set, while Akras Champion is active, you deal 1,500% increased damage and take 50% less damage. So this is really the workhorse of why our Condemns are hitting so hard. And of course, the two uh, things that got updated along with Condemn, that would be the Blade of Prophecy, which now has a legendary power that is multiplicative with your damage. Two Condemned enemies also trigger Condemn's explosion, and the damage of Condemn is increased by a max of 800%. Then the Friar's Wrath, which has a legendary power where Condemn has no cooldown and has its damage increased by a max of 800%. Costs 40 Wrath now. So all those things combined essentially allow you to do a crap ton of damage when you're Condemning. You wear the six piece set in my setup and you can just, you know, glance over the pieces. Pretty standard rolls for the most part. Nothing to write home about. And then the amulet here, of course, I would love to have critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and holy. That'd be your ideal amulet, but you take what you can get. And then some of the things that are working to keep the build going are the legendary gems, which is the wreath of lightning, the boon of the hoarder, and the bane of the trap. And so we're really trying to index on speed. We're trying to get as much speed as we can. So wreath of lightning with the high proc coefficient of condemn, you get a ton of uptime on Wreath of Lightning. So you're really activating that second part of the gem where it says while under the effect of Wreath of Lightning, you gain 25% increased movement speed. That's just helping us move through the uh, bounties faster. With the Boon of the Hoarder and a combination with one of our powers in the cube, which I'll show you in just a second, we have 100% uh, gold at a max rank coming from killing enemies, 100% chance to get gold. And then the secondary is that you gain 30% increased movement speed for two seconds after you pick up gold. And you'll be killing things all the time because you have a lot of those bounties where you have to kill 150 monsters or something to that effect. So you'll always be picking up gold and therefore moving quickly. Uh, this is very nice to have. And it also functions with our gold wrap because that's going to give you some defense as you're moving throughout uh, the T13 rifts. This might not, or the T13 bounties, this might not actually be all that necessary. If you feel that you don't need a gold wrap, there are several other options. You can run a vigilante belt to get more CDR here in case your gear is not quite up to snuff and you don't have your CDR rolls where they need to be. Or you could even run a Witching Hour if you just want more offense in the build just to get some of that critical hit damage in there. And then of course a Bane of the Trapped, which is your standard DPS gem, one of the best ones in the game for doing extra damage. And just because it is a four player game that you're going to be doing your split bounties in, you're going to want to have at least one good source of multiplying your damage from your gems. Uh, another thing you can take advantage of is the Gloves of Worship. Because you'll be bouncing around from zone to zone, it's very likely you'll encounter some shrines along the way. Many of the shrines can be very helpful for you completing bounties, whether that be an empowered shrine, and now you never have to worry about your cooldowns again. You'll have 100% uptime on the horse for sure, for sure, even if you mistakenly click and fall off the horse, because that can happen sometimes. 
Uh, you'll have 100% uptime on your Walls of Hope, which we'll talk about the skills in just a second. So you'll just have tons of utility, uh, your Acrobat's Champion always up, etc. So it can work out pretty nicely. Not required, but something that's nice to have. And then in the Bracers, there's a little bit of options too. Uh, you can go with the Nemesis Bracers because they kind of tie together, right? Gloves of Worship and Nemesis Bracers. If you're going to be hitting Shrines, then maybe you kill the Elites. That can help in some of those bounties where you need to kill monsters. But maybe just also keep you getting Death Breaths while you're doing these bounties. But another option for speed, the Warzekian Arm Guards. And these actually interact nicely with your Wreath of the Lightning because there's lots of Destructibles around Sanctuary. And as you're running through and that Wreath of Lightning is just going off all the time, it reaches out and just hits those uh, breakables. It'll seek those out. And so you pretty much always have uptime on Warzekian Arm Guards. And you can run quite quickly when you get that. It doesn't say exactly what it is. Every time you destroy a wreckable object, you gain a short burst of speed. But that's 50% movement speed. That's what that actually comes out to. So that's another source of faster movement for the build. So something to definitely keep your eye on. Um, we have rubies in the uh, armor and then a diamond in the helm. We should talk about CDR because this requirement to keep 100% uptime on Acrobat's Champion, which is what you need to keep your six piece of the set active, is right around 56%. If you have 56% cooldown reduction on the sheet, then that guarantees you 100% uptime on Acrobat's Champion. It'll overlap which is where you want to be. Um, in order to achieve that, you can cube a Leoric's Crown, and that'll kind of help you bridge some gaps if your CDR is not perfect. If your CDR is perfect, then you can definitely drop a Leoric's Crown. Uh, that would mean you'd have CDR on like, you know, both your rings, for instance. Maybe you even take the Vigilante to get that going for you as well. Um, you know, gloves, shoulders, your weapon, your uh, shield. You have CDR pretty much everywhere that you can get it. Uh, you might even be able to take an amulet that looks like critical hit damage, critical hit chance, CDR. Just some of the other places you can get it. And of course, making sure it's maxed out in your Paragon. This is probably the most important thing in Paragon when it comes to a con stuff. Just making sure the CDR is maxed out first. And then getting you towards that 56% cooldown reduction. Um, like I said, the Orc's Crown will definitely help bring you there too. Since it's going to double that effect for you with the Diamond in the Helm. But if you do have the necessary, necessary CDR, then you can drop Lyric's Crown and then maybe you pick up, you know, Warzekians and Nemesis or some other option, maybe a Chrome's buff belt for the movement speed potential there. Um, many, many things that you can look at. So there are some wiggle room things in this build. The jewelry that I was speaking about before with the Boon of the Hoarder, Boon of the Hoarder synergy is the Avarice Band. And so we use that because it helps us as we pick up that gold just continue to increase our pickup radius. And it synergizes nicely because then you're always picking up gold as you kill enemies and not having to turn around and stop for it and stuff. And that's feeding into your defense with the gold wrap, so making you invincible. And obviously dying is very inefficient, so being able to stay alive is great. Uh, like I said, you may be able to go without a gold wrap though just because you do have some decent toughness uh, in the build. But being able to live forever with no problem at all, except for when you don't have gold is pretty nice. Uh, so there's that synergy there. And then last but not least, the Swift Mount, which is what brings things together here. So with this level of CDR, 56%, and with the Swift Mount in the cube, and then with the Lord Commander passive, you have 100% uptime on your horse. And I'll exhibit that for you here. So I just hit the horse. You can see we're still on it, we're still on it. There's the uh, cooldown and then boom, we're already back up. You can hop right back on there. So that's something that you wanna aim for so that you know as you're going from bounty to bounty, if you really have to go a long way, you'll be able to just stay on the horse permanently. Even if you pop off to condemn something, you know it's gonna come right back up relatively quickly. And that's a good bridge for us to go into the skills. I personally like to take a melee generator. We do have focus and restraint in this build. So having a generator is mandatory, but you could always go with something like Justice. Some people like that, especially because there is a rune here that gives you some additional movement speed. I don't think it's all that significant personally. I just like Slash because it already puts you in the fray when you're having to click on it and then click on an enemy to hit your Slash and then you just hit them with a Condemn. So it's kind of like a one-two punch, but you know, your mileage will vary. You can choose whatever you'd like to. It's, a, it's an open slot, I suppose, but obviously it has to be a generator. Here, Condemn Unleashed makes the most sense when you're speed farming. Gets the Condemn out instantly versus something like Vacuum where there's a little bit of a buildup. Condemn Unleashed, pretty much your bread and butter damage skill. That's what you're going to be killing everything with. 
Steed Charge Endurance, it prolongs your horse ride uh, up to three seconds. And so that combined with the Swift Mount, combined with the uh, Lord Commander, that's what's getting you to have that 100% uptime on the horse. Laws of Hope, Wings of Angels, when you activate this law, you're going to get some increased movement speed for five seconds. So you can see there, it brings you up to another 50% movement speed. We have all these sources of additional movement speed, which just makes the build fly through these zones. Very good for bounties. Um, you're gonna have a lot of uptime on Laws of Hope as well. <laughs> You know, they could do potentially some finagling, right? Where if you don't want to run an Avarice Band, maybe you run a Ring of Royal Grandeur instead, right? And then your amulet slot maybe opens up. You take a Hellfire amulet and you get uh, the law um, or you get the passive for Long Arm of the Law. And so now you have a super long um, law activation when you do Laws of Hope. There's just so many different things you can do to tweak this. I, I like the version that I'm presenting presenting to you right now, but again, feel free to mess around and try different things out because you can definitely get it moving. Uh, provoke, too scared to run. The rune on here really doesn't matter. We just have provoke because sometimes you might run out of wrath. Uh, you know, there is no ingeom, so you're not getting this reset all the time and whatnot. So there might be just some times where you need to have a crowd of mobs around you. Pop your provoke, get your wrath back up and then continue to mow stuff down. It's kind of just like a safety measure. Uh, and then Akrat's Champion, Profit. Like I said, we got Profit in there just for the, you know, the cheat death, because you can see we're not carrying a cheat death. So in case we do somehow take fatal damage, maybe our, we run out of gold for a second or two, uh, at least we can cheat death there. And, you know, dying, again, inefficient, staying alive, very efficient. So I take that rune with Akrat's Champion. If you don't want to go that route, could probably go with something like embodiment of power to further uh, help out your wrath generation or maybe even like rally to reset some cooldowns if you find that you know your horse is not coming back as fast as you want it to so those are some of your options there as well and then to round things out the passives heavenly strength you need it required if you're going to be using blade of prophecy and still using a shield and holy cause uh, just there for some additional damage to you know help out again in these four player split bounties uh, I've noticed that on bosses, you're not killing them the fastest. So if you have like, you know, maybe a shadow demon hunter or something in your group, maybe they'll go and kill the bosses. You just stick to doing the other types of bounties. But that's probably the only part where the build is a little slow, just because single target's always been a questionable situation for Condemn. Uh, but this, again, is just going to help you kill things even faster. And same with Finery too. You have so many slots where you have sockets and, uh, you know, one four, six. I actually have one on my shield, so there's seven, and then three more, ten. So that's a huge multiplier of my strength, and that scales with your augments, with your paragon, as you get over that 800 soft cap. So finery is just one of <laughs> the best passives in the game in terms of amplifying your damage. Um, so definitely always keep that one around, especially when your gear is starting to get really fine-tuned, and especially as you become a higher paragon character. That is pretty much it though guys, I don't have much else for you, just wanted to get you a quick guide out there for those who want to do bounties quickly and want to stay on their crusader to do them. Certain classes will certainly be faster, probably like wizards or monks or even demon hunters will all be quite quick at getting bounties done, but don't feel bad or afraid to run your crusader because you'll definitely be able to stick around and get things done quickly. I was having a blast on it on stream. Uh, and mentioning stream, twitch.tv slash leviathan111, definitely come and check things out. I'll be gone for BlizzCon probably by the time you're seeing this video, but I'll be back for the start of the season. I'll have a video out soon that talks about my seasonal plans. We're doing level with a cause, we're starting season 12 with groups. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I will be playing a crusader for season 12 as my main class, so definitely stop on by the stream. Keep looking for more vids. Comment and let me know if you have any things that you change or improve in the builds, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Also check out the Diablo fans link in the video description if you want a written guide.